Welcome to this abbreviated service of the word for St. Mark's Lutheran Church as we continue to battle the coronavirus. St. Mark's has suspended all worship services and ministry activities until further notice. The suspension includes Palm Sunday, Holy Week, and Easter Sunday. I invite you to stay connected with one another through the church office, our webpage, and Facebook. I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to Gary Weber, Bernadette Jones, Tim Vasey, and Mabel Davison for their expertise and encouragement in filming these videos. Let us worship on this the Sunday of the Passion. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter of the procession into Jerusalem. Glory to you, O Lord. When they had come near to Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through our Savior Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, Enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? 
But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around them. They stripped him and put on a scarlet robe. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. And they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who had passed by derided him and shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's Son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him, in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lamanak Septani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. And at once one of them ran and got a sponge filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, 
the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was God's son. Let us pause for a brief moment of silence for reflection on this, the passion of our Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Palm Sunday, the Sunday of the Passion. Today we hear again the story of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem only to end at a cross. In the Palm Passion story, according to Matthew, we learn of the many ways the enemies of the gospel sought to prevent God's good news from unfolding. How they hoped to silence Jesus once and for all. And yet, in all their efforts to squelch God's salvation, God's grace was even more evident. Hear the good news from the evangelist himself and the irony of how God's truth refused to be silenced. Disciples of Jesus bring a colt and donkey to Jesus. At first the owner refuses until the disciples tell him that the Lord needs them. Mysteriously the owner relents and prophecy is fulfilled. Jesus enters Jerusalem as both the Messiah of war, the colt, and the Messiah of peace the donkey. The Prince of Peace wages war against sin. Jesus appears before the governor. Pilate's question, are you the Son of God, is actually an affirmation. You are the Son of God. The freeing of Barabbas, Jesus Barabbas, is an affirmation. Barabbas literally means son of the Father. The crucifixion illustrates the Son of Man being lifted up, that all may see, that all may behold. The crown of thorns, a joke, becomes a coronation of a king. The place of execution, Golgotha, translates to the Roman Calvary, which means rescue. The cry that Jesus saves others but cannot save himself illustrates that he is Savior, for saviors never save themselves. Christ's crying for Elijah from the cross is associated with the call of the kingdom. The story closes with the affirmation of the centurion where the non-Jew gives affirmation that Jesus is God's Son and that Jewish prophecy is fulfilled. In each and every detail, Matthew is clear. No human effort can stop Jesus from fulfilling the prophecy. Nothing can stop God from enacting God's salvation. The same can be said in our time. Nothing can stop the good news. Politicians and policy makers who thumb their noses at Jesus' power of sacrifice cannot stop the good news. Those who believe the gospel merely to be a fairy tale cannot stop the good news. 
those who seek to hijack the message of resurrection as a sentimental rite of spring cannot stop the good news. The many who seek to capitalize on the ideas of Jesus, even the very date to celebrate his resurrection for their own political and selfish gain, cannot stop the good news. Even though we cannot come together on this day and wave palm branches in procession, Jesus still comes. This is still a day to celebrate. Nothing can stop Jesus riding triumphantly into our hearts and into our situations, into the very corona pandemic itself, to announce that God's salvation has come, that God's love is real, and that sacrifice gives way to victory. The coronavirus, disease itself, and all the horrors associated with sickness and death and evil will be vanquished. Hosanna means save us now. And Jesus, by way of his very presence, does exactly that. Welcome, Palm Sunday. Welcome, passion. They lead to victory. Living together in trust and hope, we affirm our faith by way of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your Spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Prosper the work of scientists, engineers, and researchers who find ways to restore creation to health and to wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. Give courage to leaders who seek liberation for the oppressed. Bring peace and hope to those who are in prison and those who face execution. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
God of mercy. Send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded, comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief, especially Liz, Grace, Diane, Ruth, Vanessa, Gary, Paul, Bob, Doris, Charles, Jerry, Gladys, Randy, Patricia, Diane, Joanne, Richard, Ashton, Betty, Pastor Frank Showers, Lucille, Deb, April, Lenny, Gary, Esteban, Susan, Frank, Elsie, Virginia, Ruth Ann, and for the family and friends of Betty Stroop. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, we pray for all who will prepare and lead worship in this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, pour out your spirit on all who suffer from COVID-19 as well as their families and loved ones. Help them to know that you claim them as your own and deliver them from fear and pain. Be with caregivers, healthcare workers, and others who support the sick, for you are our refuge, O Lord, and a very present help in time of trouble. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all of our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A gentle reminder that while worship services and all ministry activities are suspended, the need and ministry of the church continues. Please continue to remember St. Mark's through your giving. Video services will continue throughout Holy Week as well as on Easter Sunday. Once again, you can stay connected with one another through our church office, web page, and Facebook. Should you be in need of pastoral care, please contact the church office. Be well, stay safe, and know that Christ is with you. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.